Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's time to engage, equip, empower. Because you only need to battle the devil one time to realize that this is not a joke. Parabellum. We are in desperate need of a revival. We are being challenged again with local and global issues that question our faith in God. Inflation, political unrest, mass shootings, food shortages, all have spiritual roots. Peace is found from within, but our eyes must be open to the truth. Those who want peace must prepare for war. The devil wants to break your spirit, but God has promised to deliver your soul. Get ready for the fight of your life. Get ready for Pastor Stan Hood in Parabellum 2022. Exposing witchcraft in the church. The devil does not want this word out. Sermon titles include Veritas, The Unexpected Truth, The Awakening, more and more people are realizing that something isn't right with this world. Bewitched. Christian devils. The devil never rings your doorbell. He's a master of seduction. War stories. Donatos. And the proclamation on Friday night is that this sickness is not unto death. Finance and the series finale, Parabellum. Southeast, it's time to engage, equip, empower. Because you only need... Good afternoon, Southeast. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Hallelujah. I think we're going to have our processional at this time. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Sister D. Mills. I am the director of our Pathfinder Club here at Southeast. 
And today we're um, coming before you because we are going to Campery on Wednesday, the 10th through the 14th. This will be our first Campery here with this club. And we just want to ask that the pastor will pray for us. And then we're going to show you a short video of the actual site where we'll be going. The entire club is actually going. No Pathfinder in our club will be left behind. So we just want to come this morning to say thank you to our church. Give God praise for this club. These young people are ready to go. And we just want to say thank you to our parents. And those, all of you have prayed for us. We know that you love us, and we know that Southeast is a church that love and support young people. So if you will, I want my club to turn to everyone. Give them a wave of thanks. Thank you for your financial support, your prayers, and all that, that you have allowed us to do here being active in the church. Pastor, would you please pray for us after our video? Thank you. Okay, no problem. Then, Pastor, if you uh, will. I sure will. Coming down. Father, we want to thank you for your restoration power. For a time, we didn't have a club. But you saw this day where they would be restored, where you would raise your children up, that you would give them leadership that loves them as if they are her own children. So, Lord, we just take a moment to pray for their safety and security that they experience every moment of joy that you have designed for them. Give them safe traveling mercies. We pray, Lord, that you give them wisdom and discernment, that you not allow them to be tempted or consumed by the enemy, but fill the vehicles with your spirit. Lord, help them with danger seen and unseen. Father, we ask that these experiences make them the men and women of God who will lead this church when they are grown. We thank you, God, for each and every one of them. We pray for their parents, their families, and we anoint them now, Lord, sealing them in the mission of Pathfinders, guides who lead the way. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins and shortcomings. Forgive us, Lord, for everything uh, whether we know or not know, so that we can be well with you and well, let it be well with our soul. And Lord, even now, whatever plans the enemy has designed for these children, we pray that you cancel it in the name of Jesus, that you rebuke everything. Let this club be a lifeline that uh, guides them directly to the, to the throne of God, that they will be saved forever and ever in your kingdom, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone say, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated, and we'll give it to our music ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a big God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that he's strong? How many of you know that he's mighty? Hallelujah. Come on, let's just enjoy the presence of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. My God is big, so strong, so mighty. My God plans for me, goes beyond my Everybody say, my God is big, big. so strong, so so mighty, mighty. my God, God. plans for me, me. goes beyond, beyond. say my God God. is good, 
Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Amen. Uh, would you stand with me while we repeat Exodus it should be on the screen soon. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. For the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in the midst, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen, amen. Would you remain standing with me and bow your head as we usher in the King of Glory. Father, we ask that you fill this place with your glory, Father. Father, you had held Moses in the cliff of the rock while you passed by him and you showed him your goodness. Lord, you are good and we thank you for their goodness, your goodness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Your goodness is running after us, Lord. Your loving kindness is drawing us, Lord. We thank you because you made us in your image for your glory. And then you sent your son, your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the express glory of you. And he walked on this earth, sinless father. And then he was crucified, but before he left, he sent the Holy Spirit, which indwells us. So we are also indwelled in your glory and we were made to do works for your glory so equip us empower us father to do the things that you have made us to do for your glory father father in this sanctuary fill this place like you filled the sanctuary that was made in Jerusalem with your glory father let us feel your presence now in this place let us see the glory of the Lord, Father. We thank you that your glory has shown us healing and deliverance, that we have been delivered from our sins, Father. And as we continue on this road of sanctification, we will reach glorification, Father. And then when your son parts the sky and he comes to get us, we will be caught up in the air to meet him father and then when there is a new Jerusalem father there will be no more son you will dismiss the son because you father with your glory will light up the new Jerusalem father we thank you so much we thank you for the blood of Jesus the blood which still has power today and today, in remembrance of him, we will take this communion, Father. 
Again, we thank you. We thank you for the blood, Father. We also thank you for our pastor who is going to be coming here and giving us a sermon. But we also thank you and ask you to protect him as he goes about getting ready for Parabellum. We know the devil is angry, but Father, we know who has the power over him. So thank you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. Remain, Remain standing, standing for a morning sorry. hymn. A morning hymn. At the cross. At the cross. Screen. of the Lord. 
It is so good to see your smiling faces. Praise the Lord. I can see them right through the mask. Amen. 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 Speaking of that, uh, we just ask that uh, you see the communion table down here. I know it's like a magnet. You like one of those bug zappers. You just got to go. No, don't go nowhere near just, just take the outskirts if you got to go somewhere. Don't walk across it. Only the, we just ask only the people assigned to handle the table go. You can't have a problem if you don't go nowhere near it. All right. So we, uh, we can you do that for me? Amen. Amen. We want to reverence God's holy communion, and it begins with how we treat the things of God. And so I appreciate that. Man, it's, what a day. What a day. It's going to be a high day in Zion. Don't you believe that? Amen. Uh, Y'all see that Parabellum commercial? Woo-wee. Pray for me. <laughs> Pray for me. Uh, we're working on that. I'm about five pages from the book being done, and, uh, and it will be available for you. Uh, either right at the time of Parabellum, the last uh, Sunday of this month, or uh, maybe even a few days before. But we're going to have a whole heap of them. Can I say that? That's the Alabama phrase. I have a whole heap of them. So please support it. The book is to support evangelism. Uh, you know, uh, with the funds that come from uh, people purchasing this book, whether you do it in person or online, uh, it, it will help us do ministry. And then you get something in return. How many things in life you got to give, you don't get nothing. Well, you get <laughs> the whole Parabella uh, book that will share uh, all the things that I'm preaching about so you don't even have to worry about taking the notes because I'm giving them to you. You will have that and so much more. More than I can preach about is in this book. And man, I've had a couple of people review it and they told me it's a page turner. So we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. So I'm done with that today. Uh, we got to say a couple of goodbyes. And, uh, and I hate goodbyes. I, I do. I hate goodbyes. Uh, but before that, I want to say happy birthday to Warner Brown. Uh, he is uh, going, to, is it today? I think it's today. Uh, that he'll be 90 years old. Wow. Amen. 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 And uh, I, I went to see he and Rachel. I had a wonderful time with them. And uh, I thought that I was going to uh, just get a couple of minutes with him. I thought he was going to be all out of breath. Man, we talked forever. I said, y'all better let me go. I'm going to get in trouble. I got to be, I'm going to have to throw my hat in the house before I go in. <laughs> but he played the harmonica. I didn't know he could do that. He played me a couple of songs. We had devotion. We had a good time. And so I just want to give a shout out to that beautiful family, Rachel and Warner Brown. Please continue to play, pray for Billy Johnson as well. He and little Billy are having uh, health challenges so please keep them in prayer. And also, of course, uh, 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 Waylene, Terrell, the whole Brown family, Denise, uh, as they are still trying to recover from their shocker of, uh, of my trail. Uh, I think is how you say it. Martel. Yeah, Martel. Just from, you know, unexpected. So please keep them in prayer. And so now I want to tell you, uh, Brother Emmanuel, raise your hand, Emmanuel. He's been so faithful, and uh, he has received an invitation to study medicine to be a doctor. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and uh, he's one of the folks when I'm preaching. I'm, I, he, I, there's several people I look for while I'm preaching that he's one of them. And, man, I'm going to miss you. But we do understand uh, that God has a calling for you. And so we pray for your studies, for your safety. And hey, the money, somebody say amen. If you ever send anybody to college, you know. <laughs> the, the, the unexpected uh, uh, expenses and all of that. But I promise you, God will see you through. There's a whole bunch of people in this room right now who have gone off to school on prayer. Anybody in here went to school on prayer? And come on, let Emmanuel see your hand. God has seen you through. And so he has seen them through, Emmanuel. He's going to see you through. And so you know you have a direct line to me and my family. We love you. 
Uh, I, have, I have one more before I bring uh, our Sister Hood for an announcement is uh, uh, the uh, Carlisles uh, have been reassigned to my neck of, of the woods, Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, we just want to pray for them. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you. Uh, he's going to be the senior pastor down there in Birmingham. But, you know, as I said before, I already knew this about Southeast. Y'all can't keep nobody. As soon as you have an associate and they go on this screen, it's all over, right? <laughs> so, but I'm saying more congratulations to you finding a house than getting reassigned because, man, can't nobody find a house. So praise the Lord for that. They've already closed, and so they're just going back and forth, and uh, we will certainly uh, keep you in prayer as well. We expect great. Don't we expect great things? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I can't read no lips, man. Huh? You got to come tell me. <laughs> oh, oh, Humphreys are back. Brother Humphrey. Hey, wave your hand, Brother Humphrey. Amen. Welcome back to the house. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that they gave me this thing because I've only known y'all in masks. So I had to keep it with me. <laughs> it's directory. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to come back to you. It's going to be, we're back to normal now. We ain't staying at 2, 2, 30, all that. We're going to be getting out of here on normal time. You can say amen to that. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Sister Hood has an announcement for you. expensive robes where I could just reach in the pocket. Go, go okay. Ahead. All right. Good afternoon, family. You know, um, I am the first lady, amen. <laughs> and I recognize that being the first lady, I do have privileges, I have perks, I have favor, I have all that and then some. I even have the man of God, hallelujah. <laughs> And yet, with that being said, I am not above reproach. I am not above correction. I am not above having to be chastised, corrected, rebuked, so forth and so on. And I did something last week that I had to be chastened for. And I understood that because this pulpit belongs to Pastor Hood. And don't try to figure out the what. <laughs> Just know that I recognize my position in Christ. And I know that the enemy would love to have a foothold. And it's my responsibility as his helpmeet to close the doors where I see the enemy has an opportunity to come in. So I just want to publicly apologize to my husband, my priest, my Boaz, my big daddy, my chocolate thunder, from way yonder, to all of that and then some, just to say that will never happen again by the grace of God. The devil has to come another way, but that door has been closed. All right. Yeah, I come. All right, he got you now. Amen. I, I told her not to do that, but she did it anyway. <laughs> so next week, you got to apologize for doing the thing. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. We got to get on with our service. Oh, oh, oh August birthdays. Oh, okay, well, before I say to do that, 
Uh, I want to say welcome. First time visiting our friends from Pittsburgh. They belong to Ethnic Temple, uh, Alter, and Sharon Howard. Just kind of raise your hand. Thank you so much for for coming all the way. I know you had another engagement, but you uh, took out the time to come and see us. So we appreciate seeing your faces. Uh, it's like like homecoming. It's good to see you. Amen. They may got their own testimonies uh, themselves, but. But but we learned last week we ain't gonna let you do that right now. All right, so <laughs> just rest with, now, brother Howell's my friend. Uh, uh, welcome back to Sister uh, Michelle. Yeah, and, and then then went off and I talked to Hans yesterday. Uh, uh, he's on call, uh, but uh, I was looking forward to his first time at the table with us. So it's gonna have to be next quarter because he's on call. But we look forward to that. Uh, now we're going to get to uh, our preparation for the message. And after the message, we're going right into our communion service. All right, everybody okay? Amen, amen. So happy birthday to all the August babies. August babies, raise your hand. Oh, man, it's, it's more than I thought. Look, they're all back in the corner. Man, I was about to cut y'all short. <laughs> amen. Happy birthday to all of our August babies. All right, uh, sister, we turn in the music ministry over to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody greater. Father, we thank you for this moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Yes, Lord. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Come on, you all know it. Come on, say, I searched. I searched all over, couldn't find. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. I searched all over, yeah. Couldn't find nobody. Looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, yeah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. Your name, yeah. Say your name is above all names. All praise. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Whoa, your name is above all names. You are worthy of all our praise. Your hand. Say, mighty are the work to your hand. Oh, say your name is above all names. Say your name is above all 
Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, come on, say it. Nobody greater than you. Bless your name. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. And just say, there's nobody greater. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands and just come on, just let the glory of the Lord settle on your life. Come on, let the glory of the Lord rest in your life. Come on. Be sober and steady in his presence. There's nobody greater. Oh, nobody sits on the throne but you, God. There's only one God. You're the creator. Lover of my soul, you're everything. We long for everything that we desire, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, oh God. Oh, we thank you. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles. So great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great. You do me.
yes, yes. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. For we know that there is no other help for us. We cannot save ourselves, no matter how hard we've tried everything. And there's no other way because there's nobody like you. You are our father. You are the life giver. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. As we open your word, we pray, Lord, that you open our hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Look, we, uh, we won't be long. If you would just, uh, I'll, I'll even uh, read this in your hearing. It's Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. And when Sanballat and, and the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Uh, in this first uh, message of our series, If God Be For Us, the, it's called Just Beyond the River. Just beyond the river, blessed in Jesus' name, Amen. You may be, you may be seated in in Nehemiah chapter one and uh, verse two. Uh, we have an interesting situation. It's 455 BC, and we have now a generation that has been born in captivity. And it's interesting because their situation is very familiar. Uh, they, they come from a rich heritage of folk who has seen God do great things. And, and the problem is they ain't seen none of them things. They come from a royal priesthood, and yet they're not being respected as royal or a priesthood because they are in captivity. They are a minority of people who believe in a single God who created heaven and earth among a bunch of pagans who believe any and everything. And so they are powerless by man's standards, uh, but they are wondering if this God is who he says he is because we haven't seen that. All we've seen are restrictions and things that have been put in front of us. All we keep hearing about is what he used to do, and he hasn't done anything lately for us. In my lifetime, says these brothers, I haven't seen anything. As a matter of fact, this brother Nehemiah, uh, he's never been to the motherland. He's only heard about it. So imagine how excited he is, is when a couple of guys show up from the motherland and he's like, wow, man, y'all been to the motherland? Tell me about it. And here's what they said. He said he asked them about the Jews who have escaped, those who have survived the captivity. Hold on, wait a minute. This is sounding real familiar. Uh, this, is, this is sounding like our current condition. There, uh, Christians used to be a, a majority in this country, and now real hardcore Christians, you better not tell nobody. You're a minority in this country. And then on top of it, with people of African descent. Can I, can I just talk about that for a second? Yeah, many of us have never been to the motherland. So we get excited when somebody comes and says they, they just come from there. And Nehemiah's joy is sucked away by their answer. He says, Hananiah says, the remnant there in the province who have escaped captivity, meaning they were never in bondage, are in great trouble and what? Shame. They're in great trouble and what? Shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. And his gates have been destroyed by what? Fire. So, so the hope of, 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 of young Nehemiah is that, man, everything would be all right if I could just get back to the motherland. And now he's found out that the motherland is all messed up. Now, this is significant because his entire identity is wrapped up in the motherland. 
Uh huh. I, I, I know, man, this is sound real familiar. Nehemiah be, would be one of them people who would say, well, you know, I might be in captivity now, but we used to be kings and queens. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, y'all might have us jacked up and hemmed up over here, but over there, there's glory. And he finds out there's no glory. The devil has been over there, too. Lord have mercy. Mm. And so Nehemiah is so stricken by this that he commits weeks to prayer and fasting over finding out that what he thought the motherland was is not that at all. When he heard, he said, Nehemiah 1.4, when I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I, I wish I had time to talk about that prayer because that prayer is a sermon within itself. But the bottom line is he called those things that were not as if they were. I heard what the testimony was, but I'm claiming what Jesus said we supposed to be. I heard what's happening there, but I'm claiming what God said is possible if I call upon the name of the Lord. Nehemiah became a one-man tent revival. Uh-huh. He said, I heard what the doctor said, but I went to Dr. Jesus and told on him. I heard what they said. I heard what the politician said. I heard that, they're, they're, that China is mad because Pelosi went over there, and they're talking about going to war with us. I heard what you said, but the Lord said that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. When he comes back, that's when we're going to get a new heaven and a new earth. There's no bomb or nothing that man can come up with to make make this world new because Jesus himself is going to step out with a heavenly host of angels and he's going to resolve the issues of the day. I heard what the newsman said, uh, but I went to the word and I heard, Lord, what you said. Now, don't you know God likes that when you challenge him? I can't see it with my eyes, but in the spirit, I'm claiming it. I, I, I don't have anybody to touch and agree with me. So, Lord, I'm going to speak your words back to you. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 4, which means a second law, that's what Deuteronomy means. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, the Lord said that y'all going to act up, y'all going to disobey, and I'm going to throw you in captivity. But one day, I'm coming back to get you because though you are a hard-headed child, you are still my child. And Nehemiah, though he had never been to the motherland, he has a word of God from the motherland, and he leaned and de depended upon the word above everything else. And so by the time we get to chapter 2, Nehemiah been having a revival for a while. And I find this interesting because of how detailed the Bible is. See, if something that's a lie, they got to be vague. But they're, they're, they, they told you the month. This Nisan is a, a name of a month in Hebrew. And it's the 20th year of the reign of King Artaxerxes. Either it was or it wasn't. You see, this is what gives me confidence in the word of God, because it don't play around. It tells you exactly what month and what king was reigning and what year. In the 20th year of this king, he was the cupbearer, and he evidently was a good one, because the king never saw him sad. He says, I carried the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Verse 2, so the king said to me, why is your face sad? since you are not sick. And now this is interesting because usually slaves or servants are invisible. They're no different than this podium or this desk or this bottle of water. There's just something, a resource to be used unless you have a good person. And this king values Nehemiah because he's more than a possession. He is a person to Nehemiah. He's somebody that he cares about him. He said, hey, man, what's wrong with you? The king now has broken protocol. He says, man, what's happening to you can only be heartbreak. I know what it looked like. Did your girl leave you? No, no, king. <laughs> now, look at the scripture. He said, this, this kind of the way you looking, you ain't eating. You ain't laughing at no jokes. You just going through the, through the motions. It got to be heartache. 
And then Nehemiah, see, he understands I can't break protocol, so he's afraid. Y'all with me? Because if he say the wrong thing, it's off with your head, right? And verse 3, he said, I said to the king, may the king live forever. Good start. Why wouldn't my face be sad? Oh, man, this is a challenge to Christians right here because all kind of stuff is going on. There's legislation right now in California where they want to to make the state law. Some people want to make the state law where abortions can take place up to 28 days after the baby is born. But the church ain't saying nothing. In San Francisco, kids got to step over crack addicts to get on the bus. They're littered so much on the streets that the bus got to roll up and you can hear the crinkle of the needles on the ground and the kids got to step over them. Ex-cons are so concerned. Now, you know, that's a statement right there. Ex-cons are so concerned that they are standing out there to make sure the kids get on and off the bus safely and make sure they get home. And little tiny little kids like those sitting right there got to step over drug addicts laying in the street to get on the school bus. But the church ain't saying nothing. Still, still, after all these years, uh, gangbangers are, are, are killing little black kids with stray bullets, and somehow black lives don't matter unless a white life take it. The church ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Jeremiah Wright can, can, can stand up and, and damn the USA, but he won't condemn the people in his own backyard who are so irresponsible that they're killing their own people, and we don't say nothing. To me, that's the ultimate white supremacy when, when, when white killers matter more than black killers. Oh, but that's, that's controversial. See, that won't get you no votes, but all of heaven will stand up and say amen because Psalm says that every soul is precious in the sight of the Lord. So whether it was killed by a black, a Latino, a Russian, a Prussian, a Ukrainian, God mourns when every child is killed. And then our good reverends are mad, said nobody won't listen to us. Well, they shouldn't because you got to value yourself before you ask somebody else to value you. But the bottom line is the church ain't saying nothing. One child after another is regretting the gender reassignment because they were too young to make the mistake in the first place. And now they are more suicidal now than before they were reassigned. But the church... Oh, can, can, can I tell it? I, I got I to gotta go to communion, but, but, I, but I heard somebody who, who was struggling with this issue, and now they've come to the Lord, and then now they're testifying that, that the, the whole issue was because she didn't like pink, because she didn't like baby dolls, they, somebody told her, well, maybe you don't like men. Because she liked to wear jeans and because she liked polos and she didn't like a bunch of cute dresses, somebody told her, well, maybe you don't like men. And the same people who look stink at her because she didn't like typical girly stuff are looking funny at her because she go over to the other side and nobody told her that you are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's not about pants or dresses. It's not about pink or blue. It's about how God made you. They sent her over there and then talked about it when she got there. So Nehemiah says, why shouldn't my face not be sad when the city, the place of my ancestors' graves lies waste and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Now, now I, 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 I told you I won't be long, but, but there's something about symbolic about gates. There's 12 gates to the city, and those gates are supposed to open wide to let people in for refuge, but they're supposed to shut when the devil tries to follow. 
Uh huh. The same gates that open for those who have a contrite heart are shut to those who want to tear the church down. And now we live in a time where nobody can't say nothing. And so you have people who are not here for the right reason who are trying to tear the church down and the church don't say nothing. There's a time to pray. And there's a time to fight. And Nehemiah teaches us how to know the difference. When he heard the news, it was time to pray. But when the God opened the door and the king says, what can I do for you? He knew it was time to fight. And look at what the king says. He says, then the king said to me, what do you request? Now, it's interesting. The king is not a Hebrew. He's not a Kazarian Jew. He's not a Hebrew Israelite. He's not an original Hebrew. He's not an Ethiopian Hebrew. Uh, he, 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 I, I ain't got to your, to your people yet. Uh, he, just let me know when I get to yours. Okay. He's not a Middle Eastern Hebrew. He's not an American converted to Hebrew. He, he don't know nothing about Hebrews, but he knows that this man knows God. So he says, what? Do you request? And look at Nehemiah's response. So I pray. Oh, man, I miss the day when preachers were called instead of choose a career. A preacher that chooses a career tries to figure out how to come up. A preacher whose call is always going down on his knees and saying, God, I trust you beyond everything else. A preacher whose call doesn't hook and crook and make backroom deals. A preacher whose call doesn't take advantage of his members. A preacher who is called knows that only God can give and only God can take away. If, if the Lord wants to do something for you, he's going to move on the heart of the people to do it. And you don't have to lie. You don't have to be shady. You don't have to do anything. You're just called to ministry. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. So the hood understand. It wasn't long ago that we was driving in a raggedy van where we had to tape the window up to keep the wind from blowing in. It wasn't long ago where, where by the time we got to where we going, we had sweated out everything we had on before we got there because we were humping and hooping on down the road. We were rocking. Down. It, it, it wasn't long ago. It wasn't long ago when my pay was $300 a month. I ain't trying to tell you uh, or trying to say it to brag or anything, but there's a difference between being called. A man who's called says, Lord, okay, here we go. Because I don't go nowhere without you. Here we go. I can't do nothing without you. Here we go. Now, I find it interesting that you have the, the ear of a king, and he says, is this your money, Lord? <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. Is this good money, Lord? I, I, Sister Jolly, I'm going to preach to you. It, 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 Lord, 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 everybody smiling in your face don't mean you well. Should I take it or not take it? Lord, are you giving this to me, or is the devil putting a hook out there? I can't give my prayer request to anybody, Mother Watts, because everybody don't mean well. Some people want to intercede, and some people just want to feed off of you. Lord, is it you or is it another? You might think I got mental issues in the middle of my conversation. I'm talking to somebody else. I'm all right. I'm just asking God to verify, is this a friend or is it a foe? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities in the air. I want to know, is it you, God? The Lord said, yes, you, you can take it. Now, some of y'all need to just start doing that. Lord, you can, said, yes, you can take it. Then he, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, because the Holy Spirit already told me, going to get it. If your servant has found favor with you, you know who I am. I ask that you send me to Judah. 
Now, this is a powerful statement here. Oh, I got to go Nisi, but I got to tell you this. Uh, this is a type of Christ. Uh, this is a foreshadowing of what God is going to do. Jesus recognized that he was, in, he, was, he was being adored by all of creation. Jesus was in a safe place. No weapon could touch him because Jesus had already overcame the devil and his fallen angels, but he couldn't help but look on the other side where man was. He couldn't help but look and see that man was in trouble on the other side in another dimension in another realm and he said father if it pleases you <laughs> make me a body so I can go down and be with your people the walls have been torn down but I'll be the chief cornerstone to build it back up again oh I can't be happy until I'm with them I can't be alright until I'm with them Oh, yeah. And, uh, so the king says, how long are you going to be gone? And when will you return? It sounds to me, Christina, like the king loves Nehemiah. So look at this phrase and tell me that it's not prophetic. So it pleased the king. to send me and I set a date Whew. man this is good isn't it in Nehemiah 2 7 then I said to the king if it pleases the king let the letters be given to me to the governors of the provinces beyond the river I might be safe here but the devil and took over on the other side of the river there are good people there but they're always in danger. And the problem is they don't know how much danger they're in on the other side of the river. They are praying folks there. They ain't got no money, but they got God's power. They don't have any fame or fortune, but they know how to talk to the Lord on the other side of the river. They've gotten old and gray now, but their heart still beats for the Lord. And they said, Lord, if you can use anything, use me on the other side of the river. There are grandparents taking care of grandbabies on the other side of the river. There are children that know better, that were raised right in the church. And if I don't go, they won't be saved on the other side of the river. There are people who need to be redeemed by the blood of the lamb on the, on the other side of the river so king if you put it in your handwriting if you seal it up with your seal then no weapon formed against me for I am persuaded that neither rain nor snow nor enemy foreign or domestic where spirit or flesh nothing can penetrate your seal. So King, I need a few copies of your letter because I need to hand it to some rough people on the other side of the river. Y'all still with me? I, I got to get this thing done. And so, so, so he said, then I came to the governors of the province beyond the river. You see that? And gave them the king's word. Now the king had sent officers of the army and Calvary with me. This reminds me of the Mount of Transfiguration. Just when Jesus was depleted and out of energy, all of a sudden he taketh Peter and John up with him and, and Moses and Elijah came down with reinforcements and reminded him, I want to remind you who you are. <laughs> Don't forget, though you wear a body of flesh, that's not who you are. You are the very reflection of God the Father. And by the way, I'm not just talking to Jesus, I'm talking to anybody. If you be in Christ, you are a new creature. Old 
old things are passed away and all things become new. The bill collector may see the same old person, but God knows who you are. Your family might think it's the same person, but God knows who you are. You may look in the mirror and regret who you were, and God is here to remind you that's what you used to be. But now you're a child of the king. That's who you are. Ah, you might be on the wrong side of the river, but you're on the right side of God. That's just who you are. Listen, they said Sam Ballard and Tobias, uh, they, they were mad. Whoa, they were mad. They were mad because people was going to get saved. Uh-huh. I think we got Sam Ballard and Tobias up in here. Don't raise your hand. Don't, don't, don't look at nobody. You ain't got to because we already know who you are. Just because we haven't thrown you out don't mean we ain't praying for you. We're praying that you come on over to this side of things. Uh, bitterness don't have to be your lot. Anger don't have to be your lot. Give it to Jesus and you can be over here with us. Hand lifted high and happy. And Why must you be upset every Sabbath? I mean, I've been praying for you to have one good Sabbath. Why you got an attitude every week? Why are you pointing out problems every time I see you? Something wrong with you. I heard that when the praises go up, the blessing come down. And I don't understand why you always dodging blessings. Every time you... <laughs> Look, this is for you because we got to go. In a land far away, in a place a long time ago, Jesus saw that your countenance will fall. He saw that you were going to get upset, but he wasn't upset with you just like he went to Cain. He's coming to you. And he's saying to you, look, rejoice. The gospel is good news. Galatians 1 4 says, Who gave himself for whose sin? Our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. Isn't that good news? And so, as I said before, where there was no way, the Heavenly Father opened the door and made a way. Aren't you glad about it? He made a way. God came down to dwell among us. They called him Emmanuel because he was God with us. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And though I got to go and finish this work, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I will leave you a comforter. God came down. And God just didn't come down. He came down in waves. In the Old Testament, Jesus wrapped himself in a priestly robe and he snuck in and talked to Abraham. Then he talked to Moses. Then he wrestled with Jacob. And I'm preaching this thing. And then and then from one person to another, he says, it's going to be all right. Elijah, I have a thousand who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. He's going to preach this thing. He says, look, Gideon, get on up because I'm with you. He said, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. He snuck down, wrapped in earth suit. But then when it came to Matthew, he didn't have to sneak no more. He came as a little baby in a manger and he grew up as a tender plant and the devil couldn't do nothing with him. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. The law says we all supposed to die, Brother Kerry. Not one of us, Martin, are supposed to be alive. The law says, and the law would be right. Because the law also said, if you participate in a curse, you become a curse. That's Deuteronomy 28 right there. But the Lord says, I love this curse thing. So he became the potter who visited your house. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh-huh. And see, the key is, Sister Jolly, you got to make your house the potter's house. When Jesus comes in, you can't try to stay in charge. You got to get up on the table and let him turn you into something new. Oh, yes. The Bible says, curse everything that be hangeth on a tree. But here's my favorite verse today, Isaiah 44, 22. I have swept away. Can you see it? I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like a mist. Anybody ever able to get mist back? Mm -hmm. If I stand in the right spot under this skylight, you can see the mist. 
And though it goes out, you can't get it back. And God says, that's how I treated your sins. While you still worrying about it, I spewed it out and it can't be recovered because it's gone. It's no more. It's out of here. I, 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 I return to me. Now, notice the this is why this is my favorite verse here. The Lord said, I've already done it for you. All that's left is for you to come back to me. For I have redeemed you. What you waiting on? Jesus has done the heavy lifting. All we have to do is come back. All we have to do is come back. And, 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 and I look, I told you, we ain't staying here all day. We've been here the last couple of weeks. I had to reshine my shoes. We've been here so long. So we ain't staying here all day today. It don't take long to tell you this one thing. It's a praise team uh, returns. They're going to usher us into communion. It says, he did it for who? Did he do it for you? Oh, yes. He didn't have to do it. But I'm so glad that he did. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he did it just for me. Let's prepare our hearts. Uh, uh, I want to say, sisterhood, it took a lot of courage. You know, people will be saved if they see saints stand up and just tell it like it is. It took a lot of courage for her to do that today. But in God's wisdom, he says, I will take a faulty thing and make it better on the other side of the river. He came to build your house today. And that house is you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he will do it if you let him. Go, go ahead, praise team. Just for me. Just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. stand with us we enter now into a time of special blessing you say the next line <laughs> when we eat when we drink reveal yourself to us now O Lord as you revealed yourself to your disciples then. Come, we are ready. You may be seated, Deaconess, will you uncover the table? I might have to step back a little bit. Yeah, somebody said, thank you. That would be appropriate. Redeeming. 
right. Can we move into that spiritual place today? leading our elders through the communion service today. And so they have their assignments. Elder Hill will read the scripture for us at this time. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And then he had given thanks. He broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Amen, amen. Our newly ordained Elder Parker will pray for the bread. Father God, in the name of Jesus, your word tells us you were wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is laid upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, we are taking this bread today in remembrance of you. And God, we want you to continually pour in our spirits to remember what you have did for us. And Lord, we're celebrating it on today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we want to thank you for the sacrifice that you provided for all humanity. Lord, we thank you for laying down your life on Calvary. You didn't have to do it, but you did. It's because of the love that you have for humanity that you were willing to take a body to come down here to be abused and bruised and sacrificed for us. Lord, we pray that you would bless the body, bless the blood that's been used as a symbol for your sacrifice. We ask that you would bless every aspect as we continue on in communion. May the blood wash all of our sins away. May it cleanse us from every defilement. Lord, may it heal us in whatever manner we need healing. But most of all, that blood was shed to save us. So save us is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.
started something new here. Did everybody get get served? Did we miss anybody? Okay. Anybody else? Anybody overlooked? All right. Before we take the bread and wine, we want to remember uh, those who are no longer with us. And we also want to remember those who are missing members. We also want to remember uh, those who are not in the ark of safety, mainly child, our children, grandchildren. Uh, Elder Russell is going to offer a prayer that the Lord save those who are not with us. Father God, we know you are busy today, Father, but we asked you to stop by Southeast this afternoon, Father, we ask you that you would touch every saint that's sitting in our pew. But also, Father, we also remember the sick, our shut-in, our bereaved families. Father, we know that even the ones who are watching online, Father, because we're here, Father, just to praise your name. Because this is what you did at Calvary, that we may have eternal life. So today, as we partake, we ask you, Father, that as the blood and the bread enters our body, that it will wash away all the sins, 
that we become new saints and creatures in your name. In Jesus' name we pray today, Father. Let all God's people say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. If you believe that Jesus was beaten for you, that he died for you, take the bread and eat all of it. Amen. If you believe that Jesus' blood was shed leading up to Calvary and then on Calvary for you, for the remission of your sins, take the wine and drink all of it. Please be silent and call our deaconess back up to recover the table. Go ahead, elders. You can put those in there. Man, what a high time in Jesus today, huh? Man, awesome. Came in here expecting God to show up, and yes, he did. So we just want to thank you for being here. Your cups, there's holders right in the back of the pews. Please place them there. One of the ushers or deacons will come by to get those. Uh, right after the officers extend themselves out, the ushers will come and release you out. We ask right now that because of COVID and all the things going on that you would be mindful and not talk in here inside the sanctuary or in the hallway, please escort yourselves out of the building. We thank you, we bless you, and please let's all remember to magnify Jesus' name throughout this week. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Thank you.